What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to graph exponential functions, all right? So they can go from something as easy as this, y is equal to b to the x, to something that's a lot more complicated like this, y is equal to a times b to the x minus h plus k, all right? I'm going to explain to you what each of these letters mean, just so you know. It's not super necessary for you to, like, memorize that, unless you're going to get tested or quizzed on it, okay? Because literally, you can graph either of these, by just making a little XY table, all right? But I'm gonna explain what each of these letters are, regardless, just so you know, okay? So the first kind of two easy ones you could probably point out already are the X and the Y, okay? That's basically just your X value, okay? Or your X coordinate. And the Y over here, which also sometimes you might see as F of X, okay? But these basically mean the same thing. But in either case, this is just your Y value y value or your y coordinate. Okay, so those are like the two most important ones that you need to know because that's how we're gonna make our little xy table, all right? But for the rest of these, this, uh, this a right here is a vertical, I'm gonna abbreviate this, vertical uh, stretch or shrink, uh, shrink, okay? So it makes your graph stretch or shrink vertically, all right, easy enough. Now this b right here is your base, okay? right? B, B. So the B is your base. And then uh, this H right here, that's next to the X right here, is uh, it shifts your graph left or right. Okay, so it shifts your graph horizontally, right? Side to side. And then this last number right here, this plus K, uh, it could be minus K also, it's plus or minus K. But in either case, this K right here shows you where your asymptote is, right? This one is your ass asymptote okay and if you don't remember your asymptote over here is just a horizontal line on the graph that your graph gets really 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 close to but it never actually touches it okay and lastly just a couple of rules for the values over here uh, a can never be zero all right it can be any positive or negative number right a right here it can be any positive or negative number just can't be zero and b over here has to be a positive number but it can't be one, right? It can be any positive number except one. All right, so again, you, you don't have to necessarily memorize all of this. It's gonna be really helpful if you do, but it's not super necessary as long as you do your X, Y table correctly and calculate that correctly, right? So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now with a few examples. All right, so here's the first example. So here we have Y is equal to uh, two to the X, all right? Now, one of the first things you wanna do, one of the easier things we can do is graph the asymptote. All right, so if you look at the big equation, I wrote it over here, the asymptote is represented by this number at the end, right? But as you can see, we don't have a number right here, right? We don't have plus some number. So in this case, you can basically think of this as plus zero, right? Since we don't have a number there. So this just tells us that our asymptote is at y is equal to zero, okay? So y is equal to zero is right here, right? So along the x-axis. So then we're just gonna draw our asymptote right here at y is equal to zero, right? So on the x-axis, just like that, y is equal to zero, right? And then in order to graph it, uh, all we have to do is make a little x-y table, right? So x, y, and then we wanna plug in some easy numbers uh, for x right here. So some easy numbers are gonna normally be like negative one, zero, and one. Those are the ones I like to work with, right? So let's plug in negative one first to uh, this equation right here. So we have y is equal to two to the negative first power, right? Now, anything raised to a negative exponent is equal to one over, and then this whole thing goes down here in the denominator. The only difference is this exponent turns positive, right? So it's gonna be two to the positive first power. Now two, uh, well, anything raised to the first power is just itself. So really this is just equal to one over two, right? One half but we can write that as a decimal as 0 0.5. Okay, next one, uh, we have a zero, right? So let's plug in a zero right here. So we're gonna have y is equal to two to the zero power. Now anything raised to the zero power is just equal to one, right? So we're gonna have a one right there. And then lastly, let's plug in a one right here. So we're gonna have y is equal to two to the positive first power, which is just equal to two, right? Cool, so now we have our coordinates. We have three coordinates right here. So this is our first set, here's the second one, and there's the third one, all right? So let's plot these three points. So first we have negative one, 0 0.5, right? So 
negative 1, 0 0.5, so about there. And then 0, 1, 0, 1 is right there. And then 1, 2, right? So 1, 2, right there. Right? And then we're just going to play connect the dots. Boom, right? And then here I'm going to get really close to the asymptote, but I'm never going to actually touch it. Uh, kind of like that, right? Now, remember, we always read our graphs left to right. Okay, so in this case, this graph, you can see it's growing, right, left to right. So this is called exponential growth. If you saw the graph going down like in this direction, that would be called exponential decay, right? Just so you know the difference between the two. All right, and then the last thing I want to do is find the domain and the range. And I like to draw some little arrows just to remind myself what direction these go in. All right, so the domain goes from side to side and the range goes up and down, right? So the domain is nice because it's going to be the same for all of these. It's always going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and the reason for that is because this graph right here, you can see, goes, it's going to go in this direction forever towards negative infinity, right? And then it's going to go in this direction, right? It's going up in that direction, but it's always, it's also going in that direction uh, to, towards positive infinity. Okay, and then the range in this case, right, it's our vertical values. So it goes as low as zero, but we're not going to include zero, right? It gets really, really close to zero, but we're not going to actually include zero. So that's why we're going to use a parenthesis instead of a bracket. And then we're going from zero all the way up towards positive infinity like that, right? So towards positive infinity. Boom. All right, so here we have y is equal to... Uh, 2 times 3 to the x minus 1. Okay, so the first thing that stands out here is we don't have our plus or minus number right here at the end. I should put a zero. So it basically means we have a 0 right there, right? So we just graph our asymptote at y is equal to 0. Okay, so again, that was this spot right here. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. And so y is equal to 0. All right, so let's get rid of this. Okay, so let's make that table right here. I need a little extra room. So again, we'll just plug in these easy numbers we can work with. So let's plug in a negative one into this thing right here. So we're gonna have y is equal to two times three. So we're gonna plug in the negative one right there for x. So we're gonna have negative one minus one. Okay, so then this is gonna be equal to two times three raised to the uh, negative one minus one is equal to negative two, right? So the negative second power. Okay, so this part gets a little confusing sometimes. This exponent right here, this negative two, only gets applied to the number it's attached to or next to basically, all right? So this three right here, it doesn't get attached to this two out here, right? It's just the three. So another way you could kind of rewrite this to maybe make it a little bit clearer, you could say two times, three to the negative second power. Or we can change that color actually. Negative second power, like that. Maybe it's a little bit more clear that way. Okay, so then simplifying this, this is gonna be equal to two times uh, three to the negative second power. That's gonna be the same thing as one over three to the positive second power, right? And three squared is just equal to nine. So here we really have uh, two times one over nine, right? One over nine. Okay, and then two times one ninth is simply equal to two over nine. Okay, so we get two over nine right there. All right, now next one, let's plug in a zero for x right there. So we're gonna have y is equal to two times three to the zero power minus one. Okay, and zero minus one is just equal to negative one, right? So then here we have, uh, this is gonna be equal to two times three to the negative one. Right now, again, just kind of split it up in your mind if that helps. So this is going to be equal to two times uh, three to the negative first power is equal to one over three to the positive first power. But anything raised to the first power is just itself, right? So here we really just have two times one third, which is equal to two thirds. All right. So this is equal to two thirds. And then lastly, we can plug in a one right there. So we're going to have uh, y is equal to 2 times 3 to the positive first minus 1, and that's going to be equal to 2 times 3. So uh, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, so we're going to have a 0 right here, okay? 
So 3 raised to the 0 power is just equal to 1. So here we really have 2 times 1. And that's just equal to 2, right? 2. What the hell is that? 2. Oh my god, I did it again. 2. There we go. All right. So now we have our three points right here, right? 1, 2, 3. So let's plot these. So the first one is at negative 1, 2 ninths. So negative 1, 2 ninths is going to be about there. And then 0, 2 thirds. So 0, 2 thirds is going to be like there, a little more than half. And then lastly, 1, 2, right? So 1, 2, it's going to be way up here, right? And then we have our asymptote. So again, we can graph this like that. We're going to get really close to it, but we're not actually going to touch it. Oh my god, I touched it on accident. All right, we're going to ignore that. So as you can see, we were able to graph our exponential function right there with our three little coordinates right there. All right, now let's find the domain and the range. All right, so again, domain, same thing, negative infinity to positive infinity, or if you want, you can put all real numbers. And then the range in this case, again, is our vertical values. So it's going from zero, right? We get really, really close to zero, but we don't actually touch it. So we're gonna go from zero, again, up to positive infinity, just like that. All right, so here's the last one, and I'm throwing the whole enchilada at you. So here we have y is equal to negative 1 times 2 raised to the x plus 2 minus 4, right? So again, first thing we can do is plot our asymptote. So this one is at negative 4, right? So we're going to come down this time to negative 4. Draw our asymptote right through that point right there, right, right there. So this spot right here is y is equal to negative 4. OK, and then we can make our little x, y table to start plotting our points. OK, so negative 1, 0, and 1. All right, so let's plug in negative 1 first. So we're going to plug it in right there for x. So first we're going to have y is equal to negative 1, this one right here, times 2, right, times 2 raised to the negative first power plus 2, OK, and minus 4 at the end, OK? Let's simplify some things. So negative 1 plus 2, that's equal to positive 1, right? So here we really have 2 raised to the positive first power, right? So then simplifying this, this is going to be negative 1 times 2 raised to the positive first power minus 4, okay? Now 2 raised to the positive first power is just equal to 2. So negative 1 times 2 is equal to negative 2, right? Negative 2. And then we have our minus 4 right there minus 4. So negative 2 minus 4 is equal to negative 6. Negative 6, all right? Uh, next one, 0. So let's plug in 0 this time. So we're going to have y is equal to negative 1 times 2 raised to the 0 plus 2 uh, minus 4, okay? And then simplifying this again, 0 plus 2, that's just equal to 2. So we're going to have 2 squared, right? 2 raised to the second power. So this is going to be equal to negative 1 times 2 raised to the second power and we have our minus 4 right there. Okay, so 2 squared, that's equal to 4. So 4 times negative 1 is equal to negative 4. Okay, so we have negative 4 and then minus 4, right? So negative 4 minus 4 is equal to negative 8, right? Negative 8. And then lastly, let's plug in this one right here. So we're going to have y is equal to negative 1 times 2 raised to the first power plus 2 minus 4, and that's going to be equal to uh, negative 1. So, uh, sorry, let's simplify this exponent first. So 1 plus 2, that's equal to 3, right? So we're going to have 2 raised to the third power, right? So we're going to have 2 raised to the third power minus 4, All right? So 2 cubed is equal to 8, and then 8 times negative 1 is equal to negative 8, right? So we have negative 8 minus 4, and that's equal to negative 12, all right? So we get negative 12 right there, right? So we get our three uh, coordinates right here. So negative 1, negative 6, right? Negative 1 and negative 6 right there. Uh, 0, negative 8. So 0, negative 8. And then 1, negative 12, right? 1, negative, and we don't go that, that uh, far down. So we're going to say 10, 11, and we'll just say this is 12 for the sake of this, all right? So we have our asymptote, and we can just play connect the dots. Boom. Uh, something like that-ish, right? So as you can see, this one was different, right? 
So this one is actually exponential decay because it's going, we're reading it left to right, and this one's actually going down, all right? So it's different from the first few examples, okay? And the reason that it's exponential decay is because this number right here is negative, right? If you remember on the last example, this number right here was a positive number, which is why the graph would go up in the positive direction or growth, okay? But when this number right here is negative, it's decay, right? But in either case, we still graphed it correctly because we made our little x, y table and we calculated everything correctly, all right? And then lastly, just the domain and range. So the domain, again, is just all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then in this case, the range changes a little bit, right? So we get our, our vertical values, right? We get really, really close to negative four, but we're not actually touching negative four, right? So again, we're just using a parenthesis there. And then this time it's going all the way down towards Hades, right? Towards negative infinity, negative infinity. Boom, son or daughter. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.